All right, guys, so it's finally here, the camera we've all been waiting for. Well, at least the filmmakers, the elephant in the room, which is the A7S Mark III, guys. It's here, it got announced, and it has a due date. It's dropping on September 24th, which is a Thursday, and um, I don't know, all cameras drop on Thursdays, I don't know why, but anyways, so September 24th, Thursday, is the day that this beast you know this the king of low light you know it's dropping on that day so without further ado i'm gonna be um touching on the specs uh from this camera from a wedding filmmaker's perspective okay so i'm gonna be looking at certain specs of the camera and then i'm um, kind of trying to make sense on how we can apply that to the wedding uh filmmaking industry so guys without further ado let's get into the specs So the body of this camera, of course, is, you know, a reliable, durable construction, as Sony is saying, is putting it. And um, they're saying to maximize dust and moisture resistance, additional sealing has been applied to all body sims and to the battery compartment cover. And the media slot cover has been uh, redesigned to handle harsh outdoor environments. A filter in front of the image sensor oscillates at an ultrasonic frequency of 7,000 um, cycles per second to remove dust from the sensor surface. The camera chassis is highly durable thanks to full magnesium alloy construction, which is uh, dope, which is good. I mean, they've probably added more with the ceiling to like they're saying the the memory card slots, the you know that part, the compartment over there, so that way like water or whatever it can go in when you're shooting during the rain. And um, dust, uh, dust resistance, like dust getting into the camera and all that stuff. So they're saying they've added more, I guess, um, weather ceiling to this camera. You can shoot in rough, unforgiving conditions, you know. So that's a good thing about it. You can shoot in, you know, unforgiving conditions, you know, such as hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires, earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, you know. And, and of course, during violent protests, you know, you can go there and film. So crazy condition. I mean, we're going through that. Anyways, let's not go. Let's not go off topic, right? Let's let's leave. Let's put let's put all our attention to this king of law light here. Anyway, so um yeah, so that's that. So that's a good thing about Sony. It means like you know they've improved their with their weather sealing um um technology and which is a good thing. So thank you Sony for that. And uh so the second thing we're gonna look at here is uh the the, the location of the record button. So the location of the record button. So a lot of people have been crying about the location of the of the record button. Oh, why don't you put it on the top? Why don't you put it on the back? Why don't you put it like, you know? The reason why they were crying about the record button, why most people were crying about it, is because they they're so used to the button being on top on all the cameras, right? So when the button goes to a certain location on a certain camera, they start crying about it. Why? Because people love comfort, people love what they're used to. So that's that's why all this crying was about. I think like people wanted to see the record button on the, on the top because they're used to all, all the other cameras having that button on the top, right? So to me, I mean, I mean, if they've answered people's complaints, then that's a good thing. If a lot of people are complaining about it, then hey, that's a good thing. So. Thank you for listening to the consumers, Sony, and I uh, appreciate you guys for doing all that. So let's get into, um, honestly, after using Sony cameras for like almost a decade, like I don't even, you know, I don't even worry about that button. I'm, I'm always used to that button being on the side or on the back. So after using these cameras since like 2014, uh, you know, I'm used to that camera being in the back. So this location change is not really huge for me. I'm not... Uh, it's not one of the things I was looking forward to, but hey, it's there. So let's go next one So the menu system. So do we need the menu system? I mean again, this is another thing whereby a lot of people were complaining about the menu system thing with people is They want everything to be consistent on all the cameras like dude if you are shooting on the Canon the menu is going to be set for it's going to be different if you go on a gh4 whatever panasonic cameras 
the menus are going to be different there. If you go to Sony, the menus are going to be different. Don't expect every camera to have the same menu, same kind of layout, same everything, same color. Like they have to do it their way, you know, because I mean, they can get sued. Some of these things, some of these um, uh, layouts are like, you know, they're patent. So you can't just go and say, okay, so we're Sony, we're getting into the camera game and we're going to take all Canon's layouts and we're going to use them in our cameras. It doesn't work like that. Then they're going to have to pay, they're going to have to be given a check to, to Canon every time they make a camera, every time they sell one of these cameras, Canon starts eating this side. So they have to create their whole new own menu, which they did, and people were crying about it, but I didn't see anything wrong with it. But I mean, the, the new one they've just introduced in this A7S III, um, I, I like that, I like that menu more. Because I mean, the fact that you can just go into video settings and then you can also just go into photo settings. So that's what I like about it. And um, let's talk about um, the touch screen thing, like where you can touch the menu and stuff like that. You know, um, well, that's good that you could do all that. But um, does it, some people have like big thumbs, you know what I mean? So it's, I don't know how they're going to work that out. So hopefully you can also just use the analogs um, and the buttons on there to like, navigate the menu so if they if it can do both the touch screen and the analog to navigate the menu sony you you the shit like like that's really that's dope right there so i like that i like the new menu because of that but you know did i was was this a big change i was looking for honestly not so much but now that it's here uh i like that they did that you know i like that they did that um, and also the sub menus that it has so you can kind of preview options before you get to them I like the, the fact that it can do that kind of like um, like um, what like the the right button on the, on, the, on the mouse you know like kind of see the options before you go to it before you click it so that's a good thing um, what else is here uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. okay so let's go to the recording time so recording time so the recording time in this camera has been um, extended to unlimited and but the only thing is like it's unlimited unless you're shooting in 60 frames per second there's a limit of one hour so one hour in 60 frames per second and if you're shooting in 120 frames per second there's a limit of 30 minutes as a wedding filmmaker this is i like this i really i love this the reason why I love this as a wedding filmmaker is because when I'm shooting a ceremony, some ceremonies are like an hour long, some some ceremonies are like 45 minutes long. So if you've watched my, um, you know, my tutorials or my behind the scenes, I have a whole series on that. So I like the fact that, you know, there's no limit to the record time because if I'm doing like, you know, one man band man thing, if I set a camera here, and I press record and I go set a camera there, press record, you know, the triangle formula. I don't want to be running back and like, cause what I do now is like, I, you know, I start timing 30, 30 minutes. So that way that, you know, when it's 30 minutes, I got to go back to that camera when it's close to 30 minutes and like stop and press record again. So now with this new unlimited um, thing here, they got, you can shoot unlimited if it's below 60 frames per second which is amazing, which is awesome. I like that. Most weddings um, that I do are not, the ceremonies are not more than an hour. So uh, we could do that. But some Catholic weddings that I do are like an hour and change and stuff and some Indian weddings. So the other one where it's unlimited will come into play. But that's one of the things that I'm really happy about with this camera is the fact that there is no limit to um, how long you can record. Unless, of course, you're shooting in 60 frames per second, which you have a limit of one hour. And if you're shooting in 120 frames per second, you have a limit of 30 minutes. So that's a good thing. Thank you, Sony, for this. So um, they have a new heat management system, which helps dissipate air throughout the camera so that, so that it doesn't overheat like it's competition. Uh, the, you know, the other cameras that are overheating, the, the ones that I can't name. Man, I'm Canon. R5, those cameras are over here. Um, so they have this whole new um, system that, you know, helps um, dissipate air. Well, I guess dissipate, that's what Sony says. But So um, I guess Canon's R&D department were kind of playing around, you know. 
um, or maybe their shareholders, instead of putting more money into the R&D department to find a technology that is going to help with overheating, their shareholders went out to go and buy some Bentleys and uh, some mansions somewhere in Russia. Anyways, let me. I'm watching too much Netflix. The only cameras that I had that were from Sony that usually used to overheat a lot is the um, A6000 and the, what was that, the A6100, I think it was. Anyways, that was, anyways, I'm not going to go there. Thank you for confronting that problem, Sony. We appreciate you guys, okay? Yeah. Anyway, so number five is that the flip screen. So the flip screen, do we need it as wedding filmmakers? Honestly, um, I was okay with the, with the regular tilt, whatever Sony has. I'm okay with that screen. So that I feel like the whole flipping to where it turns around and faces you, you can't do that. You can't do that at weddings, guys. Let's be serious. Like, have you ever shot a wedding with that like that? You can't, right? So that's more for vloggers. I think for that, Sony was targeting um, YouTubers by them adding that feature where you can kind of like flip the camera to face you so you can actually like see yourself and stuff like that. But um, for wedding filmmakers, I don't think that, um, we need that function with the screen to flip around. But, you know, it's good to have it to where you can have it low and then like um, flip it all the way up and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's, I mean, at least, I mean, then again, Sony, thank you for listening to your consumers. So that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to take away from Sony for that. They listened to the people and they delivered. So that's what matters. It that was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. So, um, number six, video specs. So it has 12 megapixels. So it's still me it's still 12 megapixels. The A7S one, which is filming me right now, is 12 megapixels. A7S two is 12 megapixels. A7S three, 12 megapixels. So like its predecessors, like I mean, I guess that allows for um, better sensitivity due to the large pixels, and that's making it beast of low light okay so i guess that makes it that helps it with the whole low light situations and sensitivity so to be honest the low light capabilities are the only reason why i invested in this camera the first time when it came out all the cameras that i had prior to the a7s couldn't handle low light situations so the reception is the only reason why i bought the a7s one when it came out Okay, now I didn't buy it immediately. I didn't have that kind of money. I waited till the two came out and then the one went down in price and then I bought the one and I was using that for a while. Anyways, so the low light capabilities are the only reason why this camera, um, why I even buy or worry about this camera is because of its low light situations. Because most weddings, receptions happen at night and um, you know you can't always rely on light on like light sources sometimes you don't have the light there so if a camera is good in low light and you just complement it a little bit with um, some type of light it's just amazing so this camera out the box is amazing when it comes to low light so that's the only reason why I purchased this camera for the low light capabilities that it has and um, now I guess I mean it's still good in low light so yeah so the 12 megapixels is what makes it, you know, what enables it to be so good in low light situations. So I don't mind that because I, I've never like um, considered this camera for photos. I don't take photos with this camera. It's strictly a video camera. So the low light is still good in this camera, I'm, you know, as everybody's talking about. And um, it's so good for wedding receptions. So all the grain, all the video noise with this camera, you don't have it. Once I saw what this camera could do in receptions, I was like, no video noise, no grain, sign me up, you know? So that's the whole reason why I got into the whole Sony A7S thing. Anyway, so yeah, so that's about the low light. I love the low light this camera offers. And if I can only buy this camera just for the low light to help me out in receptions, I would definitely will. I definitely will buy this camera just for the low light capabilities that it has. So, um, so like I said, I, I, I'm here for the 1080p. I'm not here for the 4K. 
because um, with weddings, um, I never shoot in 4K. I, I don't have the computing power to mess with, uh, to mess around with 4K right now. You know, I mean, your average Joe can tell, you know, between 8K, 6K, 4K. So I think, you know, these files, these are huge files. Like people don't understand like 4K files are huge. Like you need the computing power to, you know, to be able to play those um, files back without any lag or any chop and stuff like that. You need large storage and you need all these things like, you know, you know, you need the computing power. You need some structure in place to handle 4K files. So that's why I just shoot in 1080p um, and um, I can manage those files. My computer can manage those files. So uh, that's that, guys. So with the whole 4K thing, if your computer can manage, can handle that computing, has that computing power, go ahead and, you know, shoot in 4K all you want. But I'm going to stick for right now. I'm going to stick with the 1080p. Anyway, so let's get to the Bayans um, XR system that they got here. So um, this camera has a new um, image processing engine with up to eight times the processing performance than its predecessors. So they have a new engine in this. They have a new processing uh, engine, which is uh, they're calling it the Bayans XR. Okay, Sony, whatever you want to call it. Anyways. So they're saying that, um, of course, it has eight times more processing power. And basically, from what I read from the specs, it's just, you know, it's more powerful and um, it's faster, you know, handling everything from data transfer to read speeds, write speeds. So it's just basically it's faster. It's like a fast computer. It's like a computer with eight gigabyte RAM versus a computer with 32 gigabyte RAM. Like, you know, that's blowing it out out the water it's like hdd versus ssd like you know you can't like ssd is just fast you know it's just anyways so i guess the the new um engine is faster that's what they're saying from here like the processing power is faster and uh data transfer and all that good stuff or the autofocus things like it makes all that stuff just like fast so the autofocus of it and all that stuff this all fast but if you want to go into details on the whole buy-ins, whatever, make sure you check out my uncle. Uh, his name is Tony Northrump on here on YouTube. That's my uncle. Make sure you go watch his video on, the, on this camera. Anyways, so this new system also um, is what helps to eliminate the rolling shutter, right? So this whole new engine is what helps reduce. I don't think it eliminates it. I mean, I have to test it, but I guess it reduces the rolling shutter problem, which... Um, you know, I guess from now on going forward with the A7S line, the rolling shot is a thing of the past, right? All right, let's get to dynamic range, right? So dynamic range, so the picture profile settings, of course, they have new uh, picture profiles in there and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into all the picture profile stuff because I personally just put it on neutral. I don't use any picture profiles, okay? That's like for people who are not professionals, like they have like presets and shit like that. But as a pro, I just put it on neutral and sometimes on S-Log, which I don't like S-Log, to be honest with you, because of it's hard. S-Log is hard to grade, like for real, like S-Log is hard to grade. But they're saying that this new S-Log they got going on here is going to be, it's easier to grade and the colors are better and stuff like that. Because Canon has like beautiful color, right? So Sony is saying that. You know, it's it's easy to um, edit the S log they got now, and the colors are good and stuff like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see I'm gonna see about that because I really um, I like that about the 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 new technology because of the whole color system that they've improved, and um, they're saying the the dynamic range is 15 stops, which is like more than the you know predecessor, which I guess um, it just make it they just they're saying that basically. You just get more details. It just returns more details when you shoot in RAW. It just returns more details in post-production, which is always a beautiful thing, Sony. Thank you for that. Thank you for innovating, and thank you for pushing the camera game um, industry forward. Because now other other manufacturers have to kind of like tap this or match this. So thank you for innovating, Sony. So we're gonna move on to the memory cards here. This camera has four card slots. They're saying it's the only, the first camera ever in the world to have four card slots. Are you shitting me? 
why do you need four card slots? Anyways, but, but, so there's two card slots for the regular SDXC and SDXC cards, like the regular cards, right? The regular cards we all use, right? So basically it has two slots for those cards, the regular cards, and then it has two slots for a new CF Express Type A cards. So this is like, you know, so Sony is saying the CF Express Type A cards are the next standard for compact storage with fast write, read speed, suitable for both high speed, continuous still shooting, and 4K movie recording at high beat rates. They're capable of quickly clearing camera buffers even when high volumes of still image and movie data are being generated. Wow, that's crazy. I like that. So those new cards, I guess they're, they're the shit. Those cards, I guess um, they're going to also be the new standard moving forward. So Sony, again, thank you for innovating. We love you, Sony. We love you. Anyways, so um, exter external storage recording. So that helps to, for people who are shooting in 4K, that helps. But I don't shoot in 4K, so the whole ex external storage recording thing, I don't really do that because I don't shoot huge files. But for people, for my colleagues that shoot huge files, that's a, that's a plus. Thank you, Sony, for the whole external storage thing that you've innovated here. I, I don't think this is an innovation. I think they've just made it possible for this camera to do that because I know cinema cameras do this. So on to the next one. Okay, so audio quality. Um, honestly, I don't really care about like audio quality. I always use external audio anyways. Like, you know, I'm not going to go into details about that. You know, I'm, I'm going to let my, if you want to go into details about audio, Go check out my uncle, Tony Northrop, okay? He's going to go through everything. So, Tony Northrop, okay? Yeah. All right, so they have upgraded the HDMI. So, they have the big regular HDMI. So, what this does is this makes it easier to broadcast in real time as you record. This will help some of you guys, some of you of my colleagues that shoot live events. So, it's not going to be a hassle to connect an HDMI to like a projector or to like a to like a TV screen somewhere where let's say uh, let's say the, the speaker is talking and then there's a huge screen behind him, you know, kind of like a, a close up so people that are further out can kind of see the speaker there. So it's going to be easy with this new, um, with, with this camera having the huge um, HDMI port because I mean everybody, all these venues have the bigger HDMI so it's more easy They've set it up for you to just like connect the camera there. So this new um, HDMI thing, I like that. I like that. So let's move on to the viewfinder. I mean, actually, who gives a shit about the viewfinder? Honestly, like, oh, my bad, my bad. Photographers, photographers, okay. But I mean, this is mostly a videographer's camera. Anyways, so um, I ain't even going to talk about the viewfinder because personally, I don't even use it for video. I mean, I just like look on the screen for video. I don't look in the viewfinder. I mean, I might look to kind of like check if my, you know, my, uh, my lighting is right and stuff like that. But usually I just look on the screen. I don't usually look in the viewfinder. That's mostly what photographers do. So with that being said, um, they're saying that this new viewfinder uh, is like, you know, is it's like looking into glass, like clear right but i mean i'm not really let me not let me not even go there because that's not a big thing with filmmakers with um wedding filmmakers we usually don't use the viewfinder okay guys we use external monitors or just look on the cameras um lcd whatever in the back anyway so that's the viewfinder rolling shutter so the new system the whole system they have the bions xr system um allows the you know the rolling shutter to be reduced so how does this help um, wedding filmmakers? Honestly, it doesn't really help wedding filmmakers. This helps people who shoot like fast moving action, like sports and that kind of stuff, right? So um, for wedding filmmakers, I mean, it's a good thing to have, but um, we don't usually shoot like fast moving action. So that's more on like the sports and fast pace action. So rolling shutter is a good improvement from Sony. Again, thank you for innovating, Sony. Thank you. Um, the feature I was mostly looking forward to was um, the subject tracking, you know. 
So I'm stoked about this feature. I mean, everyone seems to be going crazy, um, like over the tracking system. So why is this good for weddings? So it's good for weddings because at least you can lock on uh, the bride's eye during the, you know, the ceremony, especially the ceremony when she's standing and there are other people. It's going to make it easy to kind of like autofocus, focus on the bride and keep the continuous focus on the bride and stuff like that. And also the groom and stuff. And if the bride and groom are like walking, you know, um, you can kind of like lock onto their eyes and stuff like that. And if they're dancing and stuff like that, you can do that. So that was one of the um, uh, features that I was most um, excited about, which was the whole um, eye tracking system. So I'm very happy that Sony has uh, delivered on this feature. And last but not least, let's talk about the price. So does uh, all these features justify the price? Is it underpriced or overpriced? I think it's slightly underpriced for what it does. I honestly, my opinion, I think it's slightly underpriced. I mean, like you got cameras that cost more than this camera, you know, and um, they kind of do the same thing, but those cameras are overheating. You know? I mean, I'm not shitting on Canon. I mean, they're probably gonna get it right, but like, if you're gonna charge me like $4,900 for a camera, you better not, you better make sure this shit doesn't overheat, bro. Like I'm returning that shit. I'm returning that and I'm getting my money back and I'm going to something that's not gonna overheat. Anyway, so yeah, it's worth it. It's, um, it's worth the asking price. And I think it's also, it's slightly underpriced for what it does, but hey, I mean, you want you want more go to the cinema cameras this is more for this level so for video for wedding filmmakers i mean you know it's reasonably priced i mean it's a good investment you definitely make your money back after a few weddings and uh, some people will make their money back after one wedding i mean everybody charges different prices depending on where you're at right and uh yeah and your clientele so so yeah, so in conclusion, will I be getting this camera? Uh, you're dang right I will. So with that, with that said, guys, uh, I didn't want to make this video too long, so it was hard to keep this video short. So um, if you've watched till the end, make sure you subscribe to your boy's channel. And um, I'm going to be dropping a video once every week here, or maybe even twice, but um, I'm going to try and um, keep up with you guys and at least drop a video once every week so thank you guys i really appreciate it and um thank you for watching make sure you hit the like button before you go make sure you hit that like button i don't care about the subscribe just the like button i really care about guys i don't care about the subscribe but make sure you smash the like button guys thank you so much i appreciate it it's your boy francis